Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. In the LED filled studio, if you're watching the video, it's just surrounded by light. I uh, talk about that, but I also talk about how <laughs> in this episode, um, I had to kind of cut it short. I, I, I pretty much got food poisoning like towards the end of the episode. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, I didn't puke. Uh, I was I was about to. I, I had to cut the episode short. And I ran and grabbed a gravel. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, th- I think I just ate a little some with dinner. Made me want to spew it up. Thought I could fight it. Couldn't fight it. Still kind of feel it a bit, but took a gravel. Magic. Uh, but yeah, sick episode. Uh, I talked about how I had a bad day and a good day and how they, they both can exist. Talk about social media destroying my my mental well-being and then me just getting it right back. So enjoy. Uh, check out the video if, if you want to see these cool LED lights we put up because I'm just glowing right now. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Na, 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 na. I'm almost famous. Chill out, mom. I'm doing it my own way. I'm almost famous. I'll oh, freak off that I'll make my money someday. You're looking at it. <laughs> if you're looking at the video, the vibes right now. <laughs> The vibes are pretty immaculate, chat. Um, Change up the scenery. I'm now sitting in an LED-infused environment. The stude has transcended to the next level of light, freedom, and mood expression. Except it seems to be stuck on green right now. Uh, But do I have an app for that? Yeah, absolutely, I have an app for that. Okay. Let's, oh, Paul. There we go. Let's get the rainbow going. Yeah, so uh, I'm in the studio right now, and what's what's probably going to happen is you're going to hear a little bit of guitar in the in the back of the mic. I, there's nothing I can do about it, and if it's annoying, you know, I, 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 I like I may just not put this episode out. Wow, look at the LEDs. If, if you're on the YouTube, I'm 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 bathing in blue light right now. It's I'm also <laughs> I'm just buzzing. I'm just absolutely buzzing. Um, just had uh, had like one of the worst days and best days in a while, and uh, I don't know. It's just like it's really more of a mix of money problems and the world, and you know, just a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about, and then mixed with the fact that like. Despite feeling like an absolute bag of, bag of Cheetos, I still fucking got up early, stretched, did my Wim Hof breathing, ate well today, worked all day, worked on music, worked out, got groceries, did all the shit I needed to do, and now I'm doing the podcast at 9.22 p.m. like a motherfucking savage. And the guitar you hear in the background, that's Robbie sitting over on the computer writing a sweet solo for a song that's coming out in two weeks i sent a message to a music manager i'm just like i did all that on top of just feeling like absolute i had, I had one of those just days like i don't know i don't know if you out there if you listeners out there just have a day where no matter how, like how confident you are in yourself and, and how good you feel you just have a day where you're like i'm doing everything wrong like what what is going to happen when the economy gets worse or this pandemic never goes away and why can't I last in a relationship and why did I get this part-time job? What is going on with my businesses? Am I a failure? Why isn't my music or my podcast taken off? Did I make a mistake moving into this massive house? Yes. All those are true, but they're also all not true because there's no such thing as decisions, good decisions. There's only decisions. You make them good. So I just grinded it out and made some more money, looked at my finances. I'm skating. I can do it. Um, but yeah, so I'll, t- I'll, I'll take you through what I think it is. One, when you get up early, you get up at 6 a.m. and you go to bed after 11, 
you're 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 really cruising on you know maybe six and a half hours of sleep and you know not to flex but elon musk says that's what he gets to about six hours of sleep so i'm basically elon musk right now but you know i lo- i get a little uh i get a little tired when that happens and when when you get in those like kind of like funky days where you're you're going through the motions you just don't feel inspired and you know i was working on music this afternoon during like my routine time slot and I was just really tired doing music kind of was like falling asleep recording myself writing this song and I was like do I even like music like (laughs) you have that whole like existential thing but it's also just like there's just information overload the 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 time I spent on TikTok and Instagram even though it's heavily reduced and probably very reasonable i see so much shit like i think i actually think our generation suffers from like information overload like i see so much stuff and then i forget like literally basic things that happened like yesterday and i know what a non-fungible token is because i scroll through tiktok and I now know the top cryptocurrencies and every trending fucking thing. And uh, I don't want it. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Like, uh, also, mixed with everything. I swear to God, every girl I dated in, in like, my life is on, like, a content spree with their new boyfriend. Like, it's fine one at a time. You know, when it happens in a in a reasonable, like, oh, you know, okay, she's moving on, great. And, like, the the way the, the way it should be is, like, you're like, oh, like, if you cared for the person, like, obviously you see them with someone new and you go, okay, like, you have a little bit of that, you know, butterfly feeling. But, you know, one at a time, you're like, that's fine. You know, I'm glad, I hope that they're happy. You know, I hope he's a nice guy. And, you know, I'll just get back to working on myself and a very healthy thing. When s- six of them... Are are dating new guys at the same time? Like no matter no matter how strong your walls are, you're gonna have a bad day. Okay, you're just gonna have a bad day. Like my my original long term girlfriend, my only like long long term girlfriend, hasn't had a boyfriend in years. We've broken up so long, or like she's been she kept it low key. Is now just like posting like whatever pics. Like oh, in Miami, like like the cute couple he picks like like new relationship style and then uh on tiktok it's like it's it's like uh on tiktok and instagram it's like the algorithm obviously like i follow on social media girls that i've i've dated in the last like four four years or however long i've been broken up with my first girlfriend and uh let me let me think one two okay yeah so the algorithm obviously thinks i'm like like w- when you're dating them, like you click their profile a lot, you interact a lot, you send DMs a lot, like this and that. So the algorithm's like, yo, these are your tight friends. Like put them, put them first in all your feeds. And when they get a new guy, that also goes first in all your feeds. And it's just, it was just happening all at once. My TikTok, I was like uploading videos. Um, and like when you're uploading a video, it goes to your most recent, or goes to like a page where it just pulls up like people you follow those videos while your video is uploading and it's just like my most recent ex like shaking her ass like just having a blast and you're just like okay well i mean like it's it's just too much in a day so i just sh- fucking had to put the phone down and just get back to work you know and and then before i put the phone down i'm scrolling tiktok and i see that the big short guy uh, like the guy from the movie Big Short, the one who Christian Bale played, the real investor in real life is saying that like a big inflation event is coming. And I'm like, oh, if this guy's always right about everything. Like, are we going to have another shitty economic time? I'm already on thin ice here. Just everything was caving in. And then my boss of this part-time job I got just to help cover like my massive lifestyle increase it's just so mean to me <laughs> um i secretly like it that's another story but it's still like one of those things when when everything is just hitting you 
And then like it's the end of the month, I got rent, so I'm looking at my bills and I'm like, holy fuck, just got this mountain. My Soho membership, even though Soho's closed, I'm still paying it. All these bills come due like this this one month and uh, fuck, and we're just buying all this furniture, all this shit to furnish this house. And I'm, I'll tell you one thing, folks. I said I'm going to push my comfort zone this year and like I'm extremely uncomfortable. Very, I'm a very uncomfortable. I have a insane sense of what the fuck am I doing. And uh, like I said, a part of me loves it. A part of me thinks that that's living. And like, you know, I, 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 when I have my, when I've got a good night's sleep in me, I'm able to process everything, like I said, but just one of those days hits you all at once. So I just I got back to basics. It's a it's a brilliant thing about having a routine is that rain or shine, you do the shit and then you feel good after. Whereas motivate motivation trav, he has a bad day and he oh I'm just gonna well, I'll play video games today and just I'll 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 get to it tomorrow. And then you feel like double shit and then you'll then you feel extra like what the fuck am I doing tomorrow? So yeah, I had a good day, woke up, did all everything I needed to do today and more. Putting in the burning that midnight oil, and I'm happy that I did it from discipline, not motivation. I didn't psych myself up. I just fucking hopped in there, and I'm feeling good. Now I'm feeling good again. You know, I I even turned that emotional angst into a song about my exes, and it's it's really cool. Um, like uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so like yeah, turn it into a positive, and my boss being mean to me, I'll talk about that. Um. Got a part-time job in finance, um, mostly doing like it's a it's an, an investment administrator uh, and an analyst. But like at the moment, because I know nothing of, like uh, beyond the fact that I have my CFAs, I'm I'm mostly just training on the admin stuff, which is still like a decent. But um, I mean, <laughs> the 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 place I'm working is uh, it's a really small office, uh, and I like the work. But it's just like I don't I don't know if all finance offices are like this, but it's just got like it's got an edge to it, like, and um, the people I work for, uh, just the the communication skills. If I were to rate it out of ten, I'd give it maybe a three out of ten, um, in terms of communicating what they want or how to do it. Uh, so it's mainly just me with a with a pile of work, and I just kind of work through it, and. Um, like naturally you're going to have a hard time and make some mistakes. And usually like I just get shit on because of it. And, and uh, it's fine though, because um, I talked to the old employee there and he's like, Oh, that's just like, he's like, that's how it is. Like he's the one that's like helping me when I have some issues, I give him a shout and I'm like, Hey, how do you do this? And he usually explains in 15 minutes, like a simple answer. And it, it solves me like four hours of toiling that, um, you know, the people, uh, I'm working for they don't have those or they're just the answers I guess they just don't have those answers that he has or or whatever so I I don't I don't and I don't take stuff like that personally ever like the day the day I let like someone be mean as an adult someone being mean to me um I I again I sickly I weirdly enjoy it like this guy just gives me attitude a lot and then he's like he, but it's mixed with very it's like um it's like two sides of the same coin. Like just like we'll tell you a story or give you like a finance tip and then we'll like be like, you're wasting my time. Like leave me alone. And uh, I'm just like, cool, cool, cool. Like nice. Or just like, we'll be like, you fucked this up. And I'll be like, you never told me to uh, to do it. And he'd be like, yeah, I did. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> like just <laughs> one of those scenarios. Um, yeah. And I kind of love it. Uh, it's nice. It's just like, it's kind of nice to have, um, it's almost like a movie quality, like work relationship. And I'm going to be honest, I've been fortunate in my life. Uh, I've never really had, I've never been put in this situation. I, and I've heard, I've heard people talk about, you know, work sitches like this. And I think, I think this, the reason why I can have such good attitudes about the stuff I do in life is um, because I, I don't know at what point along the journey I got kind of detached I I I got kind of just like, I because I do a lot of things, you know. I I have so many different projects, and I don't have one income source, or 
or even really one like creative output, I've never really felt like my entire existence is like pinned to like one thing and it's like so make or break, um, which is one of the benefits of being spread too thin. Obviously, all the all the negatives that come with it too are like, you know, you can't, if you're not giving your all to one thing, then, you know, what are you doing? But I'm just, just one of the benefits, like when I, when I go to auditions, my roommates, uh, for acting, my roommates, like, how are you not nervous? How are you, you know, why, like some, most people are so nervous when they go into these things. And yeah, I get a little bit of nerves more just cause it's awkward. It'd be, it'd be similar to like, the nerves you'd get at a networking event really like, but something's still like really, really kind of reasonable because I don't give a fuck. I know, I know because I've been on the other side, um, in, in business and in life and stuff, uh, or I just have heard podcasts or some, somewhere along the way I got the perspective. I know that it's really got nothing to do with me. Um, whether they like me or not, like, kind of more to do with the role and just how I look and stuff I can't control. I also just like acting. It's uh, it'd be dope to get these roles and I enjoy doing it, but I mean, I'm a rock star first and foremost, and that's entirely in my control. Uh, I can put out music, whether people like me or not, or, you know, like I don't, there's no, there's no real gatekeepers for, for that. And that's why I like it so much. Same with the pod. I'm just chilling here. I said whatever I want. You know, it's I didn't have to go to an audition to be able to set up a podcast. And I mean, in theory, I don't really have to go to an audition to act either. Uh, I could get together with some buddies, but you know, that's where I, that's where I kind of draw the line. I like I like acting more than I like producing a lot more. So, hey, you need a talented actor out there selling myself. I'll act in your thing for a, a measly. I don't even know if I would charge, but I'd like to charge $10 so I could say I'm still a professional. I don't do free work, okay? I'm a paid actor. You may have seen me in the Bud Light summer sports commercial two years ago, or that's it because that's the only public thing I've done. <laughs> um, no, I get to act in my, my music videos and stuff. When, when I... Before I... Uh, made my first music video for a band. I used to do a really weird thing. Uh, I have a weird relationship with music. I It's always been visual for me, which is weird to say. I don't have synesthesia or whatever Kanye West has where you see music or it makes you see colors, but I do have an extremely visual response to songs I like where if I am listening to a song, the the way music, I interact with music is mostly through feeling, and it's the way I write. So I don't know why, but some songs make me feel, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, they make me feel something. And it's maybe not, it's not always the same emotion, but it's a, it's the same kind of root. And when I start to feel that, with some songs, I also like to close my eyes and while I'm listening and imagine the music video to it or like play out scenes to it. And what's cool about that is it also helps me to write because when I'm writing a song, I just go from that in reverse. I like to paint a scene. I'm like, give me a mood, give me a vibe. And Rob will be like, uh, I don't know, just kind of like the general funk that we're feeling here. And, and how everyone's kind of just a little bit down, and but things are kind of okay. And so I, I paint that kind of picture in my head, and then I pull, I kind of try to pull the feeling out of that, and I paste it onto music that gives me that already gives me feeling like raw music, and then you get kind of this like, vis or this. I don't know. That's how I get. That's how I get some of some of the music and stuff. And uh, so it helps also with the music video. I can, when I hear our own songs, um, I didn't do this for our first music video, Mid-20s, because we had Matt Tompkins, who's uh, been on the pod several times uh, and now has his beer company that sponsors us, which we will get on, uh, get back on. I've been talking to him, literally just been waiting on one one couch in the studio here to start having people over. 
but yeah, he he did the creative direction and kind of wrote out. We gave him the idea, like the general. We pictured we because we had a house party in mind. My friend's house was going to be demolished. He's a home builder, so it was empty. Like had an emptied out pool, big mansion. So we're like, well, let's have a big old rock and house party and trash a place and film a dope music video doing that. And then Matt took it from there and actually made it not a house party, but more this low key kind of workaholics, but musical version kind of vibe where it's more just us living in this house, uh, trashing it, you know, people coming and going, skating in the backyard, girls just like hanging out, kind of workaholics vibe more than just a big house shaker. But Victoria, that was, that was right out the dome. Uh, we actually had one video plan in mind before the pandemic shut down that plan. We had to think of a whole new one. And I just shut my eyes and uh, pretty much visualized the playing of music in the water and the areas in the trees and by the river where we could shoot it and the dirt bike and all that. And, and you know, you can take that and it's pretty sick. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I got off, off track there. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I'd say, I'd say, I'm gonna make some changes to the pod. Uh, Robbie and I are booked in the studio in two weeks, and we gotta focus on that. And it's taking the majority of our energy. That's why he's playing music in the background of this podcast. Like literally, we're sharing the studio, um, because we gotta work every night on these songs. To get them ready for the stud, things have been closed. Things have been locked down. We haven't. We have not been practicing with the band, so we have to make virtual demos and then maybe meet once or twice before we go in. It's quite dangerous. Like without this much practice, just hopping in there, I have no idea where it'll go. But that's why we're working hard on it. And um, we. Uh, so in terms of the pod. Now that it's called Almost Famous, it's not really about you know the Too Many Jams life design and stuff. I do have to figure out what to do with guests, like what kind of questions to ask and what kind of stuff to do. I have to figure out what kind of st- to stuff to do with me because these kind of chatty episodes are fun and everything. Um, but I want content. I want to make something that's shareable, that shows our music off. Uh, every once in a while I can do this, catch up when I got more materials but I got to do something more music related. So I was telling Robbie some of my ideas and I was telling him basically how I've talked to like five or six guests that I want to have on. And I told them all last year, uh, Hey, when I finally have the studio set up, I'll get you into the new studio and we'll film a podcast. And, um, it's taken us this long to set up a studio. It's pretty much done except for a couch and maybe some decoration, but the couch Mainly, I don't want us to be sitting on like I'm. I'm sitting on my office chair. Robbie's sitting on like a plastic. I don't even know what you call it, like IKEA, like dorm desk chair. Uh, yeah. So I want to have the couch, and I want to have a, like I'd love to also get the logo behind it and and the rest of the stuff. And so I'm gonna give myself a couple weeks while we focus on this music. Just you know, get through the next couple episodes and. Then my plan is guests, big priority. Maybe think about a way to work in um, the fact that you know I can post questions on Instagram for these guests, or maybe just like random stuff on Instagram, like write in and we'll we'll talk about it. Or I do a specific segment with guests that you know ties into something shareable or something that I can tie back to the band. Um, so I'm going to give myself a couple weeks to think about it, but I'm, I'm also thinking for the, uh, you know, if I do four episodes a month, you know, maybe I do two with guests and I do two myself, but I was looking, I was kind of like looking at my ideas on, on getting exposure, uh, out there. And the thing that kind of does the best for us just raw is our covers. Like the covers we put on YouTube get two to 6,000 views, which I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but the fact that you put up a YouTube video and it usually only gets a few hundred views, I think it's awesome. So, it, like, we've put up some dope covers, and I mean, it's doing better than a podcast. Like, I don't get thousands of views on the podcast. Cumulatively, I do, but like each each episode, I don't get thousands of views. And my TikToks, 
they get thousands of views, but they don't really count. Like, uh, I also, everyone gets thousands of views on TikTok. Um, I've had nothing really pop off. Uh, I've been trying. Uh, you know, I have that uh, competition with Robbie's girlfriend, Liv. I had her on the podcast a few episodes ago. She made it. She made a TikTok that kind of blew up, and I've been trying to catch up ever since. She's got like five thousand followers. I have fifty five followers. <laughs> uh, so at John Famous on TikTok, up a motherfucker out. Um, but I've been making TikToks. I even I made the exact same TikTok as her. The same concept. It's her lying on the ground in my room actually, and she's singing on Robbie uh, on his chest. And she's got him looking at hot girls on Instagram to make it look like she's just singing her heart out and her boyfriend's like being a shady in the background. Blew up. Everyone's like, oh, like your voice is so good. Like dump this asshole. Like look behind you. Like all this interaction, 500,000 views and uh, everyone asking for music. And just like that, like she's now inspired. She, she's got music on Spotify for the first time, even though we've been begging her to do it for three years because I guess now people want to hear it. And um, she's been putting out content, 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 content. And I'm like sitting here with my thumb up my ass, just got absolutely destroyed right off the rip in this challenge. So I'm just playing catch up. Um, But still like I'll do covers on TikTok, but I'm thinking uh, every now and then, maybe once or twice a month, instead of doing a podcast episode, well, I'll still do the podcast episode, but I like using the time I would normally spend to like think of ideas and stuff. I'll make a cover, and I'll you know maybe I'll just I'll I'll find a way to tie that into the podcast. Whether it's um, you know how to do the cover, if that's interesting, or um, I don't know. I'll figure I'll figure out a way to tie it in. But you know, I, I this podcast is great. Uh, I love it. I actually look forward to it. Like, uh, oh, I just, I, w- I realized if you're watching the video that I got into a flow state there and I was staring completely at the ground, at nothing, even though there's a camera to the front left of me. So if you're watching the video and it looked like I just blacked out and just was staring at the carpet for 20 minutes, I was. Um, but yeah, the podcast is great. No, I look forward to it. Uh, but I, the things I loved about it were guests. I loved that like connection, that chatting with people. Yeah. I liked catching people up every now and then and talking about our stuff, but you know, I, I really just want to promote our music during those episodes. And I think it'd be cool to make music even, even it could be funny stuff, uh, instead of uh, like a super serious cover, maybe I make a rap or I, I make a beat or I don't know, just that's where my head's at. Uh, so I'm going to get the couch. The reason it's taking so long is because I'm trying to get one for free, but it just doesn't look like it's lining up. So I'll probably buy one, but yeah, two weeks till studio lay down two tracks. I really hope they come through because these, these tracks have a lot of potential and it's always so nerve wracking going to the studio because the potential of them really only lives in Robbie in my head. And even though they sound dope acoustically and they sound pretty good when we, when we play it together with the band or make it in the computer, it's still like what makes, what is the magic of making music is capturing it in digital format, recording it onto a track. And uh, so I get really nervous when we do that. Cause this year, like, like I said, I, I'm messaging band managers and like I'm, I'm part of my comfort zone pushing is like trying to sell myself any way I can. So on top of making music all the time, it's like I'm reaching out to people and embarrassing myself being like, hey, like, look at us. We've got music coming. I promise you, it's like, we're going to we're gonna put out th- all these songs and you're going to want to sign us, blah, blah, blah. Or, or, so it's like embarrassing if, if, uh, <laughs> if then I'm having trouble with the, the songs and they don't come. Anyway, anyway, that's, uh, that's the update. Was feeling bad. Um, obviously this gets back to any of my exes. I, I truly am, uh, happy for you guys. Uh, I think all my relationships have been, uh, quite mature and have split up for good reasons, except for maybe the last one. I, I was just, I was just in a fucking absolute funkatron from COVID. I was not myself, but, um, 
but the other one. So healthy, healthy, normal, um, normal mentality. I'm, I'm all about, um, seeing everyone happy and I'm just working on myself, you know, just having a good time and focusing on, you know, my, my, my craft is my relationship, you know, for now it's keeping me happy, keeping me busy, takes all my money too, you know, and, um, yeah, thanks for helping me write a cool new track as well. Uh, as for everything else, for some reason I feel like I'm going to puke right now. I think I ate something for dinner that is just on the verge of I probably have food poisoning. But it's like, it's it's that like low-grade food poisoning where like you ate, like maybe it was like a condiment. You know, and the condiment is just a little old. So like your body, I think I can handle it, but I absolutely, if I tried to puke right now, I could, you know, that state, if I, if I went and I tried, it would flow right out. But also if I just took a gravel, which I might do, I'll probably soak this one. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the updates. Check the video out if you haven't, uh, maybe I'll put, put a clip on to, uh, I mean, I did put I put a clip on Instagram of the studio vibes. We set up LEDs, and I gotta be honest, they're fucking sick. Like, uh, just totally sets up the vibe of the room. Now, now the roommates want to get LEDs and put them all around our couch downstairs. Um, got a little crazy here with the LEDs. Uh, yeah, but um, stay tuned. I appreciate everyone that that still fucks with with these projects. It is a marathon, all right, not a sprint, and I think I'm finally hitting my stride where we're making music, we're doing things often, and we're doing the basics and living uncomfortably. Uh, yeah. So I, ho- I, hope it's, I hope it's inspiring to you. If you're out there, um, let us be an example. We both work pretty much full time on non dream stuff. And then we also make all the time for our dreams. I'm a bit more flexible because, uh, you know, half of my income is self-employment. But um, Robbie works nine to five, like uh, like the schmuck he is. He's not. He's bobbing his head over here. He just wrote some some dope guitar. He's literally sitting off camera to my left, and he's just been ripping guitar this entire pod. You probably heard it. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, I might puke actually. Um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go because I actually think I'm about to puke. So. <laughs> Sign our sick epi, rock and roll. So Catch you next week. Let's go. Can't you see?